Welcome to this exploration of Galatians we're calling Urgent Word. Today we're going to look at the next section of Paul's letter. We're just going to take a couple of verses, but there's something intriguing about this. Let me, let me, maybe spoilers, there's something missing. All right, let's see if you can catch it. Are you ready? Here we're going to dive into Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Skirt! All right, whoa! Uh, Paul is coming out the gate here, right? Okay, so this is, you know, we looked at the first, uh, the who wrote to whom in the last couple verses, but here is this kind of standard uh, greeting of Paul's grace and peace, Um, this this kind of sweet salutation, uh, well-wishing them uh, in, in, in the Lord. But he jumps right into the matter at hand. Like we said, there's something about this letter that occasion, New Testament letters are occasional. There's a, we're intercepting someone else's mail and we know that there's a reason this person wrote this letter and there's something going on there. We have to reconstruct the, the situation. We have to eavesdrop well, if you will. And here's a major clue. Paul skipped something. Okay, what am I talking about? Well, let's break it down. There's parts of a letter that would be, you know, in a letter, right? (laughs) It's a genre. It has rules. It has expectations. If you're looking at your receipt, but somehow all the dollars uh, of the amount that you bought is missing, the receipt is missing something that's expected in the genre. So the normal way to write a letter, parts of an epistle. This would have been a letter written to a group of people. And Paul is, is for the most part, sticking to this format uh, throughout his letters that we have preserved here in the New Testament. It starts with a greeting, right? We have our greetings here at the beginning. We've read that. And there's a a section called a Thanksgiving section where there's usually this offering of uh, like thanking God or praying for them or something to that effect. And then there's the body of the letter. This is why he wrote to begin with. This is the the content, the, the matter that they need to discuss. And then there's a benediction, right? Kind of a sign off. So just give you a second pop quiz. What's missing? What's missing to the letter to the Galatian churches? Ding, 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 ding. You got it. It's the thank you section. So here's what we might expect. Paul is really good about doing this section. This is kind of part of the normal letter writing campaign that he would have. And I want to just give you an example of kind of where we find these in his other letters and what they might say. All right. So this is from the first letter to the Thessalonians, just right after the, the beginning, the, the, the greetings, there's this section in chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope and our Lord Jesus Christ. What a warm, thankful, prayerful message, like right out the gate. This is just after the greeting, and here we have this Thanksgiving section. All right, so this is his second letter to the same group of people in Thessalonica. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. What a warm and encouraging message, no matter the content of what's going on, you know, encouraging these churches and whatnot. His, his thanksgivings are, are these warm, affectionate things that he tucks in as part of the normal process of a letter writing. And Paul is, is really good about doing this. Okay, Corinth. He's actually writing Corinth in some conflict, right? So they're having some, they're having a lot of struggles. I mean, there's even some really weird situations going on there. So maybe the tone of his letter, maybe he would skip this part if he was mad or something like that. But no, no, he doesn't. He sincerely gives thanks for the Corinthian church. 1 Corinthians 1, 4, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Even here, when he's writing a church that's in some conflict, He's warm and affectionate and thankful. Does he do this in his personal letters? Maybe maybe there's some special scenario here. Well, we look at his second letter to Timothy. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Ah, this 
thankfulness section. It's kind of part of the normal standard letter writing of an epistle in in, uh, the Greco-Roman world. And Paul is using this as an opportunity to thank God for these individuals that he knows he has a relationship with. And he's talking about his prayer life. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So all the more reason when that section is absent to take note So let's go back to that text we read before. Read it one more time. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. That's right. The Thanksgiving section is missing. Oh, my goodness. No thanks. So what is going on here? What does this give us a clue about these words Paul is writing in the situation and how serious it is? Skips the customary Thanksgiving section. What could this mean? Well, one way to put it is this is a tense situation. Paul sees the situation as a great threat to the church. He's not wasting any more ink. He's jumping right to the meat of the matter. He needs to let them know. He's not thankful for the situation he sees at at hand. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, Carson and Moo help us out here. There's New Testament scholars in their, their book, An Introduction to the New Testament. Here's the observation they make about this. Without pausing for the customary Thanksgiving, Paul expresses astonishment that the Galatians are deserting not only the gospel, but God himself, the one who called you, by the grace of Christ. Guys, this gives us a clue on this letter. In our last video, I challenged you to read through this letter multiple times. And so hopefully you're in your, in your head, you're, you're reconstructing, kind of eavesdropping well, trying to figure out what is Paul writing to address and why. But here we have a sense of tone. This notable exclusion out of the normal format, if, if you were to just skip part of your, your genre's thing, uh, it would be on purpose and it would be to convey something. And Paul very intentionally is saying this is urgent. It's an urgent matter, what is happening here. And as we will see, the accusation that he said, that they're leaving, they're deserting the gospel, they're deserting God, this is a big deal. Something is happening in this church that people are leaving the the life they have in the resurrection of Christ the way Paul sees it, and they're deserting the good news. And in doing so, perhaps deserting their relationship with God. Although we haven't dived fully into the details of this situation yet through these videos. You've read the letter. You get a little bit of what Paul is trying to do. You understand this is urgent to him. At the outset, let's take this as an opportunity to reflect. So I have a couple of prompts you can journal prayerfully about, and this will close our reflection on this short text today, this skipping of the Thanksgiving section of a letter. So would you write and reflect on your faith? What matter is urgent in your church? Does anything you observe invite others to desert God. So if you can imagine yourself a little bit like Paul, who is writing out of his deep concern that people hold to their relationship with Jesus, is there anything that you see stirring in and around that might rise to this level of urgency in our own day? I can't wait to explore that together. And may you go to God with these things and and go to the church. Talk to one another over these things, just as Paul did, that we would attend to staying faithful. For indeed, our faith is an urgent one. The kingdom is at hand. So may we hold tight to our relationship with God as we navigate whatever challenges may face the church today. And as Paul, may we use every tool at our disposal to encourage one another to stay faithful to Jesus Christ. Until next time, Godspeed.